basic requirements for applying at TU Delft include TUM does not limit the number of accepted applicants. A total of 3,000 applicants applied to TU Delft and of them 440 were admitted. Apartments are scarce and fail to meet the demand. We are about to start studying aerospace engineering at TU Delft and TU Munich this fall. In this episode, we will guide you through the application process, tuition fees and housing situation for both universities. To begin with, the basic requirements for applying at TU Delft include having a secondary school diploma that is equivalent to the Dutch pre-university VWO diploma, a successful English proficiency test and an English CV slash resume. The English test is required as the instruction language is entirely English. You can choose to do either the TOEFL, the IELTS or the Cambridge assessment. The English test that I chose was the IELTS, which must be completed with a total band score of over 6.5, which I think is very doable to be honest. The application itself was done through two main platforms, studylink.netherland and osayan.netherland. StudyLink is where all Dutch universities manage their applications, while Ocyan is specifically for TU Delft's programs. The detailed steps and required documents were outlined clearly on TU Delft's website, which made the process straightforward. I submitted all the required application materials before the deadline of January 15th. Based on the provided material, TU Delft reviewed my application to determine eligibility for their program. Upon confirming that my diploma and English test met their requirements, I was cleared to proceed to the next phases of the application procedure. Those were the matching phase followed by the selection phase. After the two phases I was given a ranking number and if this ranking number fell below 440 I would be accepted to the university. During the matching phase candidates complete an online course designed to simulate the academic experience at TU Delft providing insights into the program's content. Additionally, candidates take a high school level physics and mathematics test to assess their current proficiency in this subject. While this test doesn't impact the final ranking, it helps candidates gawk their readiness. The matching phase also includes a study motivation questionnaire where applicants explain their reasoning for pursuing aerospace engineering at TU Delft. The matching phase had to be completed by February 21st and was a prerequisite for the selection phase. Importantly, none of the tasks in the matching phase affected the final ranking number. However, they must be completed to proceed to the selection phase. In the selection phase, candidates have two critical tests, the academic aptitude test and the selection exam. The academic aptitude test is simply a test that determines your ability to succeed in social situations. And there is no way to prepare yourself for this test as it is largely subjective. This test will count 40% towards your final ranking number. The selection exam is where preparation makes a difference. It includes two sections, the math and physics section and a first year material section, each with a 45 minute time frame. Personally, I found the math and physics section most demanding due to the time pressure. Regarding difficulty, all the questions were reasonable. However, given the extremely limited time per question, the mathematics questions were too time consuming. For example, I completed the math part with only 15 minutes left, forcing me to speed through the physics questions afterward. After the math and physics section, candidates move straight into the first year material section. This section covers topics such as flight mechanics, aircraft structure and aerodynamics, which are based on the content from the matching phase online course. Again, we had 45 minutes of time to complete this section and the timing was not problematic here. In fact, I had enough time left to check the questions twice. The selection exam carries 60% weight in determining your final ranking number and was held on March 8th. We were able to do the test from at home and the test was proctored. After the test, it was time to wait for the final rankings, which were released on April 15th. Please note that the dates mentioned and the application process apply to this year's process and might change in the future. First and foremost, I would advise future applicants not to spend too much time on the math section during the selection exam. The physics questions tend to be less time consuming and generally easier to handle within the allocated time. Since each question within the maths and physics section carries equal weight, it's crucial to not get bogged down on a single question. 
Secondly, I highly recommend thoroughly preparing for the first year material section of the exam. I think that this is the section where you can get the most leverage, as the questions are straightforward if you're familiar with the content beforehand. Lastly, it's important to note that you'll only have access to the integrated calculators on the laptop during the test. If you're accustomed to using a handheld calculator, adjusting to the laptop calculator can be time consuming. Be sure to practice using it beforehand to avoid any surprises during the exam. To give you an idea of the acceptance difficulty, here are some rough numbers. This year, a total of 3,000 applicants applied to TU Delft to study aerospace engineering. Of those, 2,100 completed all sections of the application procedure and, of them, 440 were admitted. This results in an overall admissions rate of around 15% for all applicants. However, if you made it to the selection exam, the admissions rate increased to approximately 21%. In addition to the ranking number, we were given scores for both parts of the selection exam. These scores are presented on a 10 point scale, where 10 represents the highest performance relative to other applicants. It is important to note that this scale reflects relative performance rather than traditional grades, with the average score being around 5 for both tests. With a score of 8.96 on the selection exam and 6.16 on the academic aptitude test, I was ranked 39th among all applicants this year. Students with a ranking number higher than 440 might still have a chance of being admitted later, as others decline the offers. This can happen for students with ranking numbers up to the lower 500s. The application process at TUM does not require as many steps. However, it is vital to start early so you don't miss any deadlines. The first thing you need to know is that TUM does not limit the number of accepted applicants. They will admit anyone who they think is able to complete the study successfully. This makes the application process less competitive compared to other universities like TU Delft where applicants compete against each other for a limited number of slots. For EU applicants the application process generally involves three steps. First, obtaining a preliminary review documentation. Or VPD. Second, completing the online application via TUM Online. And last but not least, enrolling at the university. To begin, non German applicants must request a preliminary review documentation or VPD, which translates their educational certificates into the German grading system. This document costs 75 euros and typically takes around six weeks to process. Here I would recommend starting early and requesting your VPD as soon as you are certain that you want to study at TUM, since the processing time can stretch up to 8 weeks or even longer, if there is a need for clarification. You can also apply with only a confirmation of a VPD request, but since the final VPD is valid for 3 years at TUM, an early application can take out a lot of stress. Once you have your VPT, you can proceed with the online application on the TUM online platform. The application window usually opens in late May and ends mid-July. To apply, you will need to gather several documents, including a VPT, which I talked about before, your school leaving certificate, an English resume and a letter of motivation detailing your passion and ambitions in aerospace. It is also important to note that non-native German speakers have to provide a German language certificate of level A2. Your English skills are verified based on your school leaving certificate. But if your school leaving certificate is not sufficient as a proof of your English proficiency, you will have to take a test such as the IELTS or the TOEFL. After submitting your application, TUM will review your documents. In general, there are three possible outcomes. The first possible outcome is a direct admission. This is usually the case if your average grade is better than 1.9 as a rule of thumb. The second outcome is a direct rejection if your grade is worse than around 2.7. And in borderline cases or to eliminate uncertainties you are invited to an interview. In my case the review process took around 3 weeks. German students usually receive their results sooner. If you are admitted, 
the last step is to accept the study offer and complete enrollment. That means handing in further documents, notifying the German health insurance system, confirming the pre-study internship and paying the tuition. As we both go to a EU country and are both EU citizens, we conveniently do not require a visa. Regarding tuition, an EU citizen must pay 2530 euros at TU Delft for the first year and 85 euros per semester at the TU Munich. The biggest concern at those universities is housing, as both cities are known for their tight housing markets. Delft is in between The Hague and Rotterdam, which explains the quite high rental costs. Still, we need to find housing for which there are basically three ways in Delft. The first and most convenient way is to apply for the TU Delft housing service. For an increased price of 285 euros, it is possible to acquire housing directly through the university. The catch is that it only works for international students and that only 45% of them will actually get a room. But don't worry, you will get a refund if you don't get a room through the service. Further, it is only for the first year. After that, everyone must look for their own room. Who gets the room depends on who pays the tuition fee first. So, after receiving the ranking number on April 15th, one must accept a place in studielink.netherland. Then, after a while, the student receives the acceptance letter via email and must fill out a confirmation statement. After a few more hours, the student is sent a financial letter which outlines the amount of the tuition fee. Whoever's payment arrives within the first 45% of international students will be able to get a room through their service. So after being admitted, it is quite stressful as you really want to get into their service as the housing situation otherwise is quite horrible. A good tactic would therefore be to always look for emails right after being accepted and to complete all the steps as fast as possible. Please keep in mind to select an express transaction as international transactions might otherwise take up to two days. If you are not from the EU, the tuition fee is way more expensive and the chances for the housing services are even worse as you must complete an additional step, where you have to do a tuberculosis test. In any case, it is a good idea to be aware of the other options as well. The second way of acquiring housing is through the room.netherland website. There, the housing needs are met on a first registered, first served basis, which means that whoever registered on the website the longest ago will be ranked the highest on the apartment prospects. Usually, you do not stand a chance of acquiring a room if you registered less than a year ago. The best action step right now would be to register for a fee of 35 euros, which will give you access to up to 8 years. Even if it will not serve you in your first year, it might serve you later in your studies. The third option that I will describe today is the Kamenet.Netherland website. This one fits you best if you speak Dutch as most offers on there are student groups that will prefer a student with which they can communicate best. On there it is almost entirely about connections, which you can best make by getting to know people, for example on Facebook groups. So as an international, it is also quite difficult to acquire housing through this option. To summarize, you really want to get into TU Delft's housing service, as it can save you a lot of trouble early on. The housing situation in Munich is not any better, if not even worse. The TU does not provide any housing service, so you are on your own, finding accommodation in the private market, which is difficult, to say the least. Munich is one of Germany's strongest economic areas, attracting many people for work. However, apartments are scarce and fail to meet the demand, which naturally leads to a surge in rental prices. On average, renting a flat within a 40 km radius of Munich costs around 25 euros per square meter, excluding heating and electricity. Landlords often demand credit reports and application folders. Also sending over 30 applications to get only one viewing is no exception. While there are organizations providing relatively affordable housing to students, Typical waiting times range from 4 to 8 semesters. So, to find a home in Munich, you need time, perseverance and a bit of luck. Stay tuned for more updates once we've started our studies, allowing us to share hands-on experiences directly from the classrooms and campuses of TU Delft and TU Munich. Until next time, keep dreaming big and reaching for the stars. Yeah.